Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madam, and this is the recap review for Bell Collective. So before I get started, I just want to let y'all know, some of y'all already know this about me, but let me just go on here and let everybody else know who might watch this in any other video <laughs> and see. But um, you might see some stuff over here. Just understand that I've been graying since I was 11 years old and that's what it is. Like it is really setting it off. With the lighting that's going on in here today, I am very moisturized. The hair is very moisturized. Very, very moisturized. But it's really setting it off right here. I got some specks and, and, and things right here, but it's really setting it off right here. So that's what y'all see. So now that I got that out of the way, let's get into this recap review. Y'all, so we still at this Pearson, uh, I guess that's what they, they said their last name is, uh, uh, dinner, couples dinner. And everybody is like, okay, we don't know who this man is that Marita walked up in here with. It is obviously not Cedric. Letitia could not wait until she left the function. So in front of everybody, she was like, I, I just can't. Because I, I. at first I thought she was going to be like, I'm, I'm going to call you. I'm going to call. I got to call you later on. I see you, but I'm going to call you later on. But she was just like, I just can't. Like. You walked in the room and you took my breath away. I just, I don't understand. Oh my gosh. So then she asks her what is going on because that man is clearly not Cedric. And she was like, no, it's not Cedric. I'm happy. That's all, you know, that's all you really know is that I'm happy. It's not Cedric. I'm happy. I've known this person. We went to school together and whatever. And I was just like, okay, despite the fact that Marie got in the confessional and said that she ain't, you know, going to give... Latrice, the time of the day, it seemed like she was, in a sense, because she was like, you know, I am somebody, because, you know, this man, he played in the NBA with my brother, and I am somebody. I was just like, because <laughs> y'all remember when when she was like, well, I ain't never heard of her before. Who is she supposed to be? So, yeah. I was like, girl, you did not have to say that. But anyway, so we get down to the foolishness of the dinner which is Glenn proposing and before he proposed he gonna get up and he gonna say uh I'm just like what's wrong with you he done got up in front of all these people he don't know none of these people but he done got up in front of all these people and told them well my wife offered me 51% of her business so everybody already looking like girl what's wrong with you and then he was like well, I'm here today, and I'm asking for 100%. So everybody was like, what, girl? Everybody tired. So then they done made it look like it's a, a super overly dramatic pause in the conversation, in the, in the statement, in the, in the announcement. And he talking about he wants 100% of her heart. I was like, boy, stop. I'm tired. Anyway, so anyway, like I said, he going to propose. She acting like she's just like, oh, my God. Girl, you told him to propose to you. He still want that contract, whether whether he trying to make it seem like, oh, oh, I'm good. I just want your heart. I know she's been busy. I know she's been working. And we've discussed all kinds of stuff. And I'm just like, you came home. You didn't get the meal that you wanted off rip. And you said, I need a contract. You need to come up with a contract within 14 days. And you came back. She came up with, you can have 51% of my company and you need to propose to me because you told me that you were going to re-propose to me. And I'm just like, girl, bye. And I mean, she's like, oh my God. Like, she seems so excited. And I'm like, it's not organic though. Like, wouldn't you have wanted that to be something that he came up with on his own and did without having to feel like he was under duress? Wouldn't that have been actually romantic and magical as Latrice stated in her confessional? Like, girl, bye. I'm just like, this was not romantic. This was not goals. This was not nothing to just be like, oh, oh, that's so sweet. Oh, and she was like, yeah, when I got married, I was 22 years old. I was young and this is going to be us starting over. And we both didn't know what we was doing back then, but we done been through some things and we going to start over now. And I'm just like, 
sometimes when people say that, I'm just like, you can't start over. Like you've been screwing, you got a cat, you got a child. Y'all been living together. Y'all been doing the same things. And to me, from what I've seen in a lot of cases, when people tell me, so, oh, I want to start over. They'll seem all right at first and then old stuff gets brought up and it's like, nah, you tried it. See, this is why. This is exactly why, honey. So anyway, moving on from this foolishness. <laughs> um, I ain't got time for it. So everybody, well, not everybody. People have, have decided to meet up at Kalon's house. Kalon has invited, you know, Antoinette, Latrice. Um, who else? Um, Latrice's business constituent and like maybe one other person and I'm just like why? Now she has the goat or whatever and I'm like don't nobody, didn't nobody there care nothing about that goat. Like girl bye. I'm just trying to understand why they had this meet up in her house because nobody cares about that goat. Anyway Latrice was, was letting everybody know that everybody but Marie is invited to her essential you know, product launch situation. And then Antoinette followed behind her and said that, you know, everybody, literally everybody has been invited to her sip and see, which I think is stupid to even call it that because in my life, in all of my 37 years of living, a sip and see has always been where people go and look upon a child. I ain't ever heard nobody use sip and see in reference to nothing else outside of going to see somebody's child, a baby, not understanding. I'm talking about a human, not, not, oh, well, this job is my baby and this dog is my baby and this project that I'm working on is my baby. No, something that was pushed or removed from somebody's body that is another human that could be claimed on taxes is what I've always heard referenced as, as something that you do for a sip and see. But anyway, so she and her feelings and she was like, you know, the contractors are moving fast and, you know, that's good. But, you know, I'm just like, girl, it's like she always doubting herself. But at the same time, she was like, I, I want, I mean, I understand she wants it to be right. I understand that. That's cool. I get that. And, you know, she brings up how she wants to be able to be influential to the black people who are coming up that might want to do the same thing that she's doing and she wants everything to be right that's cool i understand that so anyway we are actually upon the uh the event where essential is going to be unleashed for everybody to look upon and gaze upon and I think that the shoes that Latrice had on when she got out of the vehicle, they were really cute. I ain't going to be able to wear nothing like that. I, I can't do it. I'm just not really, I just can't. Like for me, it, it just wouldn't work. I don't think it would work for me. Like I have somewhat wide feet and like you got to have really small petite feet to pull off shoes like that. But anyway, I think those shoes were cute. I think she looked nice as a whole. So yeah, she's at her event and she's taking pictures. Of course, Zaddy then got up in the picture with her and you know she's just happy that a lot of this stuff has come to fruition she's been working on this for like several years and she's in the confessional reflecting back on how she was the first in her family to attend college and she started from the bottom now she here and all of that so she's talking to everybody and letting them know you know how this process has been for her and how happy she is about it and you know, it just is what it is. It seems like it's a very joyous occasion. I'm glad that she's doing well. So, La Tisha goes off to the side and she's talking to Tambra. And she was like, girl, I've been finding myself doing this to everybody. Because she has that ring on her finger. And then, you know, Tambra finds out that there's going to be another wedding. And she's like, I expect you to be front and center. And I'm just like... Like, is this just a plot line? Is this just a storyline? Just like them living in that unlived in house? Like, it, nothing makes sense when it comes to them. I'm trying, I'm trying to be here for black excellence. But it's just like, your brunches don't go well. 
you you everything just looks staged your marriage is trash even though y'all sitting up here supposed to getting a rededication ceremony and all that going on it's like why for what but anyway who am i nobody so today is the day of the ribbon cutting ceremony for essie and marie i am so happy and proud of them to be black business owners and to have opened such a well needed type of facility mental health is very important and i feel like there are not enough facilities out there like that that service the community because it's just too many people out here that need that type of service so anyway the only thing that i can say that somewhat yeah about this scene was that I noticed that when they cut the ribbon Marie was the only one who cut it and I felt like Marie should have had one of the handles and Essie should have had one of the other ones and they cut it together because there were people already holding both ends of the ribbon so I was just like why so anyway they get on the inside of the building and Marie's daddy is there the brother who I'm guessing played basketball with the guy who she came to the dinner with and the guy who was at dinner who has been putting that big smile on her face. So the ladies took her off to the side and was like, you know, I don't know what's going on. And like a lot of people, this is their first time even seeing him and they're like, okay. And so of course, Latrice, I mean not Latrice, Leticia is kind of spilling her business talking about oh well she brought him to the dinner and I was confused and I didn't know who he was and that's a tall tree to climb like she doing the absolute most y'all and I'm just like oh. it's like she she's in a race to try to tell people business sometimes and I'm like girl you need to mind yours and tend to yours because your whole relationship is trash and I've been saying this the whole time and at the end of this episode, um, y'all gonna see why. So anyway, they gonna get a tour of the facility, I guess. But whatever. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I'm happy for Essie and I'm happy for Marie. And again, things like this are needed all over the place, not just in Jackson, Mississippi. So Tambra done met up with old boy in the park. Because he is always trying to go out on dates with her. And she was just like, well, instead of going out to eat and all that like we always do, I invited him to come to the park. And then no one will be able to hear us when we're talking. So, of course, she brought him there with something in mind, which was to see if he was going to be the one who was going to fertilize her eggs that she has on ice. And she asked him, you know, you know, I know you haven't had any kids and I never had any kids even when we weren't together anymore. So what, you know, stopped you? And he was talking about he was waiting on her. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I would not be surprised if they come out of nowhere and say that he actually has one, two or three kids. Because, uh, yeah. Stranger things have happened. So it would not surprise me. Not wishing that on nobody. I'm just saying it wouldn't surprise me if that came out. So anyway, this heifer has produced one of those cups because the doctor was like, oh, well, you're going on a date with him. You know, maybe you can whip this out of the date. Like, who, who just whips that out on a date? Girl, but girl. Anyway. So, yeah. um, He making it seem like, you know, he might be here for it. And, you know, he been waiting on her. And I'm like, okay, if you say so. And, you know, I guess they're going to try to make a relationship work. I don't know. Anyway, Marie and Letitia met up at some place where they're going to eat Southern food. And they are talking. And Letitia is letting her know that the Ferris Street project is not going as planned. Nobody will call her back. Nothing she's doing is working. Like, it's just got to what literally nobody will call her back. So it is very disheartening for her and she has not been a been able to take it that well so marie is talking to her and you know was like well have you looked into some other areas that have that don't have any historical markers or anything and all of that so that it'll be an easier process and have you ever considered that maybe this just wasn't 
what was meant for you to get. So, you know, she was just like, ultimately, if it is meant for you to get, it will happen. Y'all, so anyway, Antoinette is having her sip and see. Again, I don't understand why she's calling me that because normally that is associated with children, babies, specifically. And it's not finished and everybody was there. And um, the first person to arrive was old dude who she went on a date with named David that she met when she, you know, went on her first trip alone as a single woman. And um, he told her that he would come back if, you know, she invited him. And so he was the first one there and brought her flowers. It must be very hot because he was glistening. Um, yeah. He was very nervous, hot, and it might be a combination of both. But yeah, he was glistening. I don't know why she didn't offer him a paper towel or something. Because he was just sweating some terrible. So anyway, she appreciated his support. She, You know, you can tell that she's very, you know, happy that he came. Kaylin came in and, and gave her some gift. And I don't know if it's a portrait of something or whatever. I couldn't really make out what she was saying. And I didn't feel like rewinding it to see. So I was like, girl, bye. I don't even care what you said or what it was like that. And so she introduced the two of them and people, other people started arriving. And when Marie had there, it seemed like the air got sucked out of the room a little bit because Antoinette was talking one-on-one -on -one with Latrice and Kalon and was like, you know, Marie just got here, so, you know, how are you feeling? I know that things haven't been pleasant when y'all have had y'all interactions. And so, you know, <sighs> Latrice was like, you know, it is what it is. This is your event. You can do what you want to do. But I don't know how things will ever go between she and I. And, you know, it just, you know, always, it, it always went left. So I don't really know what to tell you when it comes to that. So... At one point, Antoinette had her daddy on video chat and like her smile got really, really big. And, you know, she's a daddy's girl. Her daddy raised her and he couldn't be there. So she had to give him a tour of what was there, um, even though he's not there. And so, you know, because of her background, they've had moments where they were evicted and cars were repossessed and all that good stuff it was just a lot that she's been through and i understand that and so you know in that sense i can understand and i am happy for her success and her daddy told her that he was proud of her so i was like i know that's right so anyway marie told everybody you know she is very supportive of Antoinette, and you know she here for it and that it's past her bedtime so she gonna leave so she was trying to leave and Latrice, you know, took her by the hand and said she wanted to talk to her for a few minutes real quick before she leaves. She actually apologized and wanted to let her know that she's just not that type of person that she gave off. And so Marie told her that, you know, she accepts the, her apology and that she can understand. But at the same time, she knows what she's looking at. She's looking at a younger version of her and she's been there and that you can't be that way with people. So they seem to be okay, but neither one of them trust the other one. So it just is what it is as far as that is concerned. So since all of the ladies are there, before Marie left, Latrice felt the need to tell everybody that the Fair Street Project is a no-go and she's just been getting so many no's. She got emotional. Her husband was there, so he was going to kind of try to console her a little bit and you know, people are like, you know, it might be just delayed. It might just be something that, you know, if we got to kick the doors in to make it happen, that might just be what it is. So we're not going to give up on it. Ultimately, even though it seemed like that's what she had done, but they were just like, look, we, you know, we got to stick together and we'll be able to get through it. So that was the end of that. So, uh, like I was saying earlier, <laughs> The teacher's marriage is trash, and unless it's the way that they edited the video, the preview for next time is actually going to be, I don't know if it's one part or two or three, but they are doing a reunion for this show. And we're going to find out that there is a child in play, and he told me today he is. Now, I don't know, but it wouldn't surprise me if he got a few ideas. So, 
we already know how he get down. He over here talking about contracts. I'm pretty sure he be out there thotting and bopping anytime she's not in sight. So, anyway, I, I just can't. So, anyway, hopefully y'all enjoyed this recap review for Bell Collective. Let's get down in the comment section and discuss what we've seen and what y'all think gonna happen during this reunion. It seems like it's gonna be a little spicy. I don't know. But anyway, hopefully y'all are having a wonderful weekend. I am about to relax. And what time is it? I am going to catch up on a live that I was supposed to watch of this gaming channel that I watch. And then I'm going to play my game and relax. And then I'm going to go to bed so I can get ready for work in the morning. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. Be safe out there. And I will see y'all later on for something else. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe to my channel if you have not. And take it easy. I really do appreciate all the love and support that y'all give me. It is very much so appreciated for real. Y'all have a good one. Bye.